Jin Seok is absolutely hands down my favorite guy of this season. That is just embarrassing, Happy. The constant hair touching and the constant head tilting. I'm interested in this, this, that one. <laughs> Hi you guys, my name is Anna and I am back with my part 2 review of Singles Inferno Season 3. This is going to be covering episodes 4 till 7. If you can't tell, I'm very sick right now. I was very sick over Christmas, so please excuse my voice, but without much further ado, let's get into the review because episode 3 and 4 were spicy. So episode 3 starts off with Kwani and Ha Jung in paradise and they're flirting and having fun and having banter. In the other paradise, we see Shion and Wanik and they're getting to know each other. He he is 31 and he's a realtor, she is 27 and she's a model. To be honest, I don't know if I felt any chemistry between them at all, they just kind of seemed more like friendly type, whereas I definitely think there was sparks going on with Ha Jung and Kwani. And then the next morning, the two infernos finally merge, everyone gets to meet each other and this is very exciting. First of all, Min Young and Jin Suk were very happy to see each other and at this point of the series, I was really just rooting for them. A lot of stuff happens later which we'll talk about but at this point I was like, Oh, they're so cute. I hope they go all the way. I hope one of them doesn't mess it up. Well, we'll get to that. And Minu and Shion like the look of each other in terms of appearance-wise. They make eyes. And obviously, Hezhan is bothered by the fact that Kwani is walking in with Ha Jung, this new girl. Ha Jung is very quick to notice that she is bothered. So there's already some tension going on with Hezhan, Kwani, and Ha Jung. And then they play a game where the boys have to squat in the water holding up a girl. And this is really, really hard. And I felt bad for Habin in this scene because all the boys came in with just their swimming trunks. He was the only one wearing a rash guard. I felt bad for him. We all know what that feels like, don't we? <laughs> and with this game, I thought obviously Jin Zuk was going to win for sure. But then in the end, Wanik actually won. And this is proof that it's mind over your body. If you put your mind to anything that you want, you can achieve anything. So I was very impressed. So Wanik and Hajang won the challenge and they go and have fancy lobster lunch. But I must say Wanik, he seems like a really nice guy, but he doesn't have much of a personality. I feel like a lot of his scenes are cut. To be honest, the only two male contestants that have any screen time and it's kind of worth viewing is only Kwani and Jin Seok. The others, they're so quiet, not really much personality. They seem like very nice guys, but for reality TV viewing, it doesn't make such a, a good show. So thank God for Kwani and Jin Seok. And then Hezhan and Kwani go and have their sweet potato lunch. And she basically makes her moves saying that the other guys are ugly and she only likes him. So she's also being very direct. And then when I saw Jin Seok and Min Young have their scene, I was like, oh my God, you guys are so cute. Don't fuck this up. Please go all the way. But Min Young started disappointing me from when she was saying, to the girls, I don't want to be so locked in, coupled up with Jin Seok. I don't want other guys not to approach me because I'm coupled up with Jin Seok. And from then on, I was like, girl, no, please don't do this. He is the best one in there. Jin Seok is absolutely hands down my favorite guy of this season. He is gentle, he is sweet, he is funny, calm but quiet but confident. Obviously his heart. Yeah, Jin Seok, my absolute favorite guy of the season. And then it gets to the evening and then there's a sequence where all of the participants open up their own individual post box to see how many candies they got given by the others. The most notable thing was all of the girls gave a candy to Habin. So he ended up getting five when he thought he would get zero. And this action absolutely inflated his ego to outer space because from what I understand, I think the girls gave Habin a candy because they felt bad for him. It was kind of pity candy. And then suddenly his ego got so big that he ended up basically getting really drunk and acting really obnoxious at the fireplace later. And that is just embarrassing, Habin. And after that, basically, we have not heard of him since. All of his scenes, anything that he says gets edited out. So embarrassing. And then afterwards, they're all sitting around the fireplace. Kyuri ends up sitting next to Kwan Hee, which I think he was quite happy about. And everyone makes fun of Min Young and Jin Seok only getting one each because they're like, oh, you guys are so in love. Jin Seok was like, obviously I gave mine to Min Young. And she says, I actually gave four candies out. And then she starts laughing out of embarrassment and guilt. And then later on, they actually end up having a talk about this because he was like, hey, I don't want you to feel bad about wanting to get to know or talk to other people. Don't let me stop you. He's basically so sweet and adult and and, uh, considerate but then she's like why are you saying that to me you're not interested in me anymore so basically what she's saying is that she wants to be able to talk to and get to know other guys but Jin Sung only still has to have eyes for her and girl I'm sorry but the world just does not work this way and Jin Sung tries to calm her down and reassure her but she ends up crying and then I got really put off by that I was like girl you're being very unreasonable and immature right now so that's the moment I stopped rooting for them as a couple anyway back to the fireplace and then the most eventful event 
event happens because people ask Kuan Yu who he's interested in and he basically says, I'm interested in this, this, that one. <laughs> Yeah. And everyone's like, whoa, the panel is like, whoa. <laughs> and then it was funny because I saw Mingyu smirk because he was like, ha, bro just messed up real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously no girl is going to be happy to hear this and the following day when the girls are all in the girls room They all make fun of Kwani for doing that. They're like, well, we supposed to feel happy when he said that and Kyuri's like I wasn't even interested in him. He basically liked Hezhan, Hajong and Kyuri equally 33% each and then maybe the 1% could be safe for somebody else <laughs> I just don't think Kwani Yi thinks much before he speaks or he's just of not a very smart cookie because I think every guy would know before he said that, that that this would not give a positive reaction from the girls. He might be a good athlete but I don't think he's that smart. <laughs> Kyuri and Kwani Yi were talking by the fireplace afterwards but I just genuinely did not understand where his sudden interest in Kyuri came out from anyway. I understand Hezon and Hajong you spend time with in Inferno but Kyuri you haven't even talked to her. How can you say you are interested in her 33% equally? It just as much as the others. It felt like this cutie thing came out of nowhere. The next morning, they're all having breakfast and Jin Suk is really funny when he copies Ha Jung's iconic chin move. He does it and everybody laughs. And he's also caught in between the crossfire when Ha Jung and Kwani are bickering at the table and Jin Suk's like, I feel like I have blood coming out of my ears. Stop it. <laughs> He is absolutely my favorite guy. And then we have the new girl, Minji. She seems very sweet and bubbly and friendly. And it was funny when she had the one-on-one -on -one chat with the guys because they were all making comments like, oh, your dress looks like this grass. Or you look like Dipsy from Teletubbies. I was like, what is going on? So the producers tell her later, you have to pick two guys to go to paradise with you. And she ended up picking Minu for the dinner date and Jin Zok for the romantic swimming pool date. And in that swimming pool date, I thought I saw huge sparks go off. There was definitely Definitely chemistry between them. Jin Suk basically couldn't keep his eyes off her. He said, you're really charming and all this. And she asked, do you have an ideal type back in Inferno? And then he looks at her and he goes, not anymore. <laughs> and everyone screamed. I screamed. And I was thinking, oh, Min Young, this does not look good for you, girl, because I think he's falling for the new girl, Minji. And then there's a scene where Ha Jung is telling off Kwan Yi and she is really going in on him. You're acting really rude. I expressed how I felt towards you, but I'm not getting anything back. I don't know what more else I can do. And he's kind of sitting there with like this, <laughs> this kind of face. And I just wanted to be like, Kwan Yi, like grow up. You are 36. And Ha Jung says in her interview afterwards that Kwan Yi just makes her feel like a roller coaster of emotions. And I just wanted to be like, oh, don't like him anymore, please. You can do so much better. Go for the other guys. To be honest, apart from Jin Suk, there is no other guy that I would have gone for as well. I feel like Ha Jung, me and her personalities are very kind of similar. She's very direct, logical, and she's also not shy in expressing her feelings or going after the guy. She's entertaining to watch. She's honest. I think she very much lives in the moment, whereas I'm sure all the other girls are nice too. But <laughs> in this season, honestly, the constant hair touching and the constant and head tilting with Kyuri and Shion especially. It's, it's too much. I just want them to not focus on looking pretty for the camera, but just, well, I just want them to be real and just be in the moment and have conversations with people. And for me, Ha Jung is the girl that does that the most. But yeah, really, Kyuri and Shion constantly going like this. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, nobody was as shocking as Soe was to me from season two. That girl was another level. But yeah, this season, sometimes it can get a bit bit annoying too. And so just before I jump into episode six and seven, here is a quick message from the sponsor of this video, LingoPi. If you want a fun and natural way to learn a language, then a service like LingoPi is the most perfect solution for you because it's the first language learning platform that uses foreign TV shows and movies to teach a language in the most fun and binge-worthy way. And Singles in Inferno is actually one of the many shows that they have on their platform, which is amazing. They have a huge collection of Korean, Japanese, French, Spanish, German, Russian, Portuguese, and Italian shows and movies with at least thousands of hours of content in different genres. There are some great features such as interactive subtitles that gets you an immediate translation when you click on an unfamiliar word. You can change the playback speed of the content to match your learning capabilities. There's an on-screen transcription on the side that shows you all the sentences of the show and you have flashcards and quizzes so you can revise the words that you've learned. And you can even practice your pronunciation by clicking on the microphone and getting feedback in the form of a score. So if you want to pick up real genuine native conversation with street lingo, slang, popular culture, then I really recommend you guys checking out LingoPi. So make sure you go and check out the link in the description because they are offering a seven day trial with 55% off. So I really, really highly recommend that you go check it out. And now back to the content. 
So episode six and seven, let's go. Hezan is telling Kwani that she likes him the most, but she does want to get to know other guys as well. And then he's like to her, I'm gonna be very, very honest with you. At first you were my ideal type, but then when we went to paradise, you seemed too high energy for me. And I've actually seen people say this about Hezan. She seems like a very nice girl, but some of her facial expressions or her reactions to stuff seems a bit overdone. I think that's just who she is as a person. I don't think any of her gestures or her facial expressions is like fake, but I can see why for some people that might be annoying. And he basically ends up saying that he had a good time with Ha Jung, but that right now his number one is Hezan. And then you have the <laughs> couple in paradise, the three of them, Minu, Binji, and Jin and Minu is third wheeling hard in this scenario. He's just like sitting there quietly while Minji and Jin Zog are doing most of the talking and flirting. Minu, yes, he's tall and I guess he's good looking, but he just does nothing for me. And it's kind of interesting to see that later on, Kyuri and Shion, they're kind of fighting for Minu. Shion actually ends up crying over the fact that she can't get enough time with Minu. So I think Shion really, really does like him. And then the next morning, the three of them come back to Inferno. And oh my goodness, if looks could kill, the way that that Min Young looked at Jin Zog and Minji. Oh, she was shooting daggers. And then Dex kind of makes this comment where he's like, is Min Young just kind of very oblivious? So she's kind of acting dumb. <laughs> and then the whole panel start laughing. Yeah, I don't think Min Young has understood the seriousness of the situation yet. And Jin Zog, he seems very popular with the guys because they all say they missed his presence while he was away. And I'm sorry, but I had to laugh at the shady cameraman or the shady editors when they focused on Kwan Yi's face as the boys were talking nice things about Minji, saying, oh, she's really good at conversation. She's really nice personality, really nice girl. And then the close up is on Kwan Yi's face and he's like looking like, hmm, you girl's nice, huh? And we're all thinking the same, like, you're gonna go for Minji, aren't you, Kwani? This guy just does not stop. And then it was time for a wrestling game where the girls had to fight each other. And this really shocked me because Cutie ended up being the ultimate winner. And she is like one of the shortest and tiniest, but she ended up winning in such a badass way. And she just did it with a smile on her face. So good for you, girl, good for you. And then in front of the whole group, Min Young starts making comments to Jin Zok, like, oh, you had fun last night, didn't you? Kind of teasing, but it kind of makes him feel uncomfortable. I'm sure it made Minji feel uncomfortable too. And uh, Min Young and Jin Sa go for a talk and she's still trying to get validation from him. Like, oh, but like, how do you feel and all this? And then he's like, hey, but girl, you gave out four candies. You have absolutely no right to get mad about me for anything, which is absolute truth. She can't get mad at him. But yeah, Min Young is jealous for sure about the new girl. So Kyuri, who won the challenge, she ends up picking Minu to go to paradise with her. To be honest, their scenes are really kind of boring for me. They're both quiet and not that interesting to watch. I feel bad for Mingyu because I think he's such a decent guy but just, yeah, he hasn't locked out for him. Hesan ended up choosing to go to Paradise with Wanik and I don't think that Habin will go at all this season. Poor guy. Wasn't there a girl last season who didn't get to go at all but yeah, Habin, I, I just feel bad for the guy at this point. Just like, why are you still doing that? And Xian ends up choosing Mingyu, but this is not like a romantic thing. They just go to paradise just to kind of talk about how upset they are, basically. <laughs> I think Minji is a good flirt because she's actually very good at kind of slyly getting in the guys and she asks Kwani to take her on a tour. And you can see when they go off together that Ha Jung is not happy with this. And at this point, when I was seeing the scenes of Kwani and Minji, I was like, oh my God, please do not <laughs> let Minji fall for Kwani too, because what is going on? Why do the girls like him so much and then later on all of them are sat in the room and they're kind of asking each other like truth questions and Minji asks Min Young outright if she's gonna change her mind about the guy that she likes obviously Jin Zog and Min Young says no she's not gonna change her mind and Habin is asked whether he's interested in anyone and he picks Ha Jung for this Kwan Yi ends up saying that his mind is now set just to one person do we believe him let's see and then the others leave Ha Jung and Habin alone for some alone time I can tell in her body language and in her facial expression she is not into Habin. She wants to talk to Kwan Yi still. Like you can just see it in her face, but he still doesn't end up saying much. He's like, I want to save it for when we go to paradise. I was just like, dude, I don't think you're going to go to paradise. I'm sorry. And then Minji kind of confronts Jin Zog about him having a wife in Inferno. And then she later goes to Kwan Yi and she, it seems like she's making moves on Kwan Yi as well. I mean, yeah, to be fair, she came in later than everyone. She has to kind of be more active. But yeah, Minji is a flirt. <laughs> when Minji was making moves on Kwan Yi and you can see that his face is like, oh, I think she is my idea ideal type I think I might start to really like her I was like oh my god can he just be for real like nobody can take him seriously at this point but then as these two are having that conversation Ha Jung comes halfway through and basically stops it Minji leaves and basically Ha Jung again tries really hard she tells him I want to go to paradise with you and that she likes him the most you can't get more direct than that the problem with Kwani is just that
but he's not good at communicating. He's always placing the blame on the girl saying, oh, you made me feel confused. I'm always unsure about how you feel towards me. And the panel also, they don't really understand what he's saying. He's not a good communicator. <laughs> and the scene of Ha Jung coaching Min Young on what she should do, I thought that was actually really sweet because her advice is exactly the type of advice that I would give to my friends. I always say, try your absolute best with a guy. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be too shy. Don't pull back. Just try your best. Put your feelings out there. If it doesn't work, then at least you've tried your best. You have no regrets. That's exactly the kind of advice I give to my friends. And then you have Hezon and Wanik on their date in paradise. Again, none of these paradise scenes are interesting to me. <laughs> and then Kyuri and Minu have their date and she finally finds out that he is 24. He's born in 2000. She is four years older than him, I believe. And she and still does not know how old Minu is. And I wonder if her mind will change. She found out that that he's that young and there's this funny scene back in Inferno where the guys are talking and they're saying Hezon is really into Wanik and then the panel are like no where are you guys getting this from and obviously Kwani sitting there listening like is this really the case? Does she really like Wani? And he's like, oh my god, this is annoying. <laughs> Habin is the spreader of fake news. And then the guys have to do a sprinting mission and Chin Zang comes in last. <laughs> he kind of looked funny running along because his arms are so bulky. He looks like a dinosaur while he's running. <laughs> Kwani comes in first, Mingyu comes in second, and Wani comes in third. Wani actually does pretty well in all of these challenges. I felt bad for Habin once again because he was coming in second, but he just kept falling behind. This guy just can't really catch a break. So Kwani and Hezon end up talking and then he just asks her about the Wanik thing, whether the guys have gotten it wrong. And she's like, oh, he's a nice guy, but I definitely feel I don't really get butterflies when I'm with him, like when I'm with you. But then she says this thing where she's like, I don't mind if you go to paradise with Kyuri or Minji because I thought that's what you were going to do. She basically gives him permission to do so, I guess. And I was like, girl, are you sure you want to be doing that right now at this point? Because Kwani can easily be swayed. You know this. That's basically the upcoming season for the next two episodes. From what I can gather from the teasers, I think it's going to be Hezon with Kwani that went to paradise. I feel bad for my girl Hajong because she really is the best girl in there. If he ends up picking Hezon, then she's gonna end up with nobody else because she, I don't think she's gonna go for the other guys. And I just get a feeling that Jin Zog is gonna stick by Min Young because Minji is playing kind of hard to get. She's also playing the field. And I also just think he's like one of those like loyal types. If he chose Min Young from the beginning, I don't think he's suddenly just gonna choose another girl now. I just get the feeling he's just gonna stick by Min Young's side. But let's see, what are you guys' predictions? Let's chat in the comments down below hopefully with the next review my voice is better so please bear with me and yeah see you in the next one bye